Hello everyone, I am Howard, and welcome to episode 1 of the Road to Recreational Pilot, FSX Road to Recreational Pilot. Welcome to the flight section of episode 1, Effects of Controls. In this lesson, I'm going to teach you the effects of primary and ancillary flight controls. So let's start off with Elevator. As we briefed earlier on, Elevator has the primary effect of uh, changing pitch, and the secondary effect of changing speed. And I, I apologize, but I forgot to mention that a secondary effect of elevator is also change in altitude. So we're going to demonstrate it right now. I'm at level flight, relatively, at 100 knots. What I'm going to do is I'm going to apply back elevator pressure by pulling back on the yoke. As we can see, our airspeed is dropping, our nose is high up, but our altitude is climbing. And we're going to do the contrary now, we're going to pitch down. And as we can see, our nose is pitching down. Our airspeed is increasing, and our altitude is decreasing. So quick recap, elevator, primary effect, pitch, secondary effect, change in speed, and change in altitude. Now let's move on to our ailerons. Our ailerons have a primary effect of changing the bank angle, of rolling the aircraft. And it has a secondary effect of turning the aircraft. Watch. As we deflect the ailerons to the left, by turning the yoke to the left, our aircraft roll to the left. And because of the aileron deflection, we are now in the bank. And the secondary effect is apparent. We are yawing in the direction of the turn. And the same thing, we can make the right turn. We are rolling to the right. We have a yaw to the right in the direction of the turn. And as we roll level, we, ro uh, we roll level and our yaw stops. So basically, quick recap, primary effect, of uh, primary effect of aileron is roll, secondary effect of aileron is yaw. Simple as that. Now we have completed, uh, no not yet, uh, we, uh, and then the third primary control that I want to talk about is rudder. Rudder is operated by these rudder pedals down here, that you step with your feet. And watch, as we, say, as we said, rudder's primary effect is your the pivoting about the normal axes as you see here however the secondary effect is roll and this is because the outboard wing travels faster than the inboard wing during a yaw watch we're going to yaw to the left and as we see there's a roll and we're going to yaw to the right as we see there's a roll to the right so quick recap, primary effect of rudder is your secondary effect of rudder is roll. So to put it all together, as we know, ailerons produce adverse yaw, as you can see. The nose is moving initially in the direction that we don't want it to. So if we combine ailerons and rudder, we can have a coordinated turn. But that will leave to the turning episode. Now moving on to more ancillary controls. We have three ancillary controls in this aircraft. Flaps, throttle, and trim. And, we, and uh, I am going to demonstrate, firstly, the effects of flaps. Now because this is a Cessna 172 and it is a high wing aircraft, the flaps will cause an initial nose up moment. However, in all aircraft, the resultant pitch angle f for a flap change would be more nose down than original. Now what we're going to do is lower 10 degrees of flaps at this speed. We're at 110 knots, the flap limiting speed. So we are within limits. I'm going to lower flaps by deflecting this, this switch down to the 10 degree detent. 
observe the nose. The nose is pitching up and I'm not doing anything. So the primarily flaps are used to increase lift and increase drag for landing and increase lift for takeoff in uh, early flap settings. So this, the effects of flaps would be a change in pitch, either resultant or initial, and a change in speed because of the increased drag. A, a reduction of speed will be apparent. So that is the effects that are the effects that is the effect of flaps. Now we're going to talk about the throttle. The throttle is operated by this black knob here. And if we increase the throttle, like so, as common sense dictates, we also have an increase in speed, as shown in the airspeed indicator. And if we decrease the throttle, we'll see a decrease in speed, as seen in the airspeed indicator. However, it's not that simple. I was, uh, I was making some pretty sort of more advanced uh, flight control movements. So what, what, what happens if I just leave it as it is? What happens if I increase, what happens if I decrease throttle and leave it as it is? You might wonder. So let's do that, why not? I'm going to decrease throttle. And look what the nose does. It's pitching down. Similarly, if I increase throttle, the opposite will happen, as demonstrated now. The nose is pitching up, slowly but surely. However, there's one more very interesting effect of throttle application. If you apply throttle, the aircraft wants to turn left. This is best uh, portrayed during slow flight. Now I'm going to slow down to 70 knots, and I'm going to increase throttle rapidly. I'm just going to slow down really quickly, yeah? And then watch, the, watch this corner of the windshield. This corner of the windshield gives you a lot of references, and you'll, you'll notice in further, further lessons. Pick a landmark. Good. I'm going to increase throttle without applying rudder. The nose, yours, to the left. This is due to a number of factors, namely Newton's third law, to be really simple. For every action, there must be an equal and opposite reaction. The propeller turns clockwise to the right. And therefore, the equal and opposite reaction will be for the aircraft to turn anti-clockwise to the left. And there's a phenomenon called spiraling slipstream that the propeller turning in front would actually spiral the slipstream around the aircraft's fuselage and ultimately at slow speed it will hit the vertical stabilizer and therefore it will cause a left turning tendency and that's why you you might hear your instructor saying more right rudder because it's true you need a whole lot of right rudder when you're climbing and lastly I want to introduce the effects of trim I think trim is a rather underappreciated uh, control surface once, when you're a student. But when you develop further and further in aviation, you'll realize how, just how important trim is. Trim is controlled using this wheel in the bottom. Or it can be controlled using this switch on the yoke. Nevertheless, the trim, trims will do the same thing. And I think it's best to portray trim when you portray the effect of trim when you are flying out of trim, ironically. So what we're going to do is we're going to fly out of trim and we're going to apply too much nose down trim. Watch. I'm trimming down. And what happens if I let go? I'm, I'm completely out of trim right now. And what happens if I let go right now? Watch. I'm going to let go three. I'm going to slow down first. Don't want to overstress the airframe. But you get the point, right? Three, two, one, let go. Nose just pitches down. The only reason why I'm pitching up now is I'm holding back pressure. So what happens if I want to, let's say, hold this attitude here? I'm holding back pressure. That means I need to trim backwards. 
That means I need to move the wheel backwards until all the control pressure is relieved to hold this attitude. And now I'm hands off. That means I'm in trim. And this further emphasizes the notion of flying with a relaxed grip. The more relaxed the grip, the easier you'll become in trim. That's just a fact. Similarly, the same thing will happen if you have too much nose up trim. You will need a whole lot of, a lot of forward pressure to keep the attitude where you want it to. So as a quick recap, the elevator changes pitch and then changes speed and altitude. The rudder changes yaw and roll, like so. The ailerons changes roll and yaw. The flaps changes, the flaps produce, or should I say, an initial pitch moment, a change in speed, and when it settles, an ultimate nose down, a, a more of a nose down attitude. Throttle changes speed and changes pitch. like so. And the trim changes control pressure as we just mentioned. So if you do have any questions and comments please leave it in the comments below obviously I'm happy to help. And most importantly have fun, fly safe and stay tuned for the next video where we do straight and level cruising flight.